Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here with a new fall themed art journal layout today. So let's start. I am going to work on my 6x6 disc bound journal that I have created. I don't know if you have seen Monday's video where I did show how exactly I custom made my art journal. And um, this is actually mixed media paper by Ranger and I will work on it with my Distress Oxide inks to create a background. And since I am going for a full themed uh, art journal today, I chose three colors, which are fossilized amber, peeled paint and carved pumpkin. And they are going to give me a lovely background for the technique that I will do next. Distress Oxide Ink blends beautifully over this paper and it makes my life really easy. Now I'm going to bring in some uh, vintage photo since I want to introduce some brown on my background. And since I'm working with Distress Oxide inks, I can always add some uh, water splashes all over the place, let them uh, react with the ink for a few seconds, and then I will use a towel and blot all these uh, droplets, which is going to give a lovely background. I really love this technique and I cannot stay away from it when I'm using Distress Oxide inks. Now I want to add some brown splashes, so I have uh, smooshed one of my Distress Oxide uh, brown ink pads there. I believe this is Gather Twigs, I'm not sure which brown I used. And uh, I have diluted it with water and with a thin brush I'm just going to add some splashes as well. Now I will use this stencil by Tim Holtz with all those leaves and I'm going to add just a little bit of vintage photo through some of the leaves and the branches. I'm not going to cover them up completely. And then I will move the stencil on the other side and do the exact same thing. So I end up having just a hint of where those uh, branches and the leaves are going to fall on my background. Now I will use this uh, script uh, stamp and I will uh, stamp all over the background. For that I'm using archival ink and this is coffee. And you can use this background as it is, just add a focal point. You can turn this into a card if you like. I'm going to take it a step further and I will show you a really fun technique. Now this is an embossing pillow, it adds uh, this dust all over my project and it is going to help my embossing powder that I will use later on to stick only where I want to. And I also made sure that all the distress ink on top of my page is completely dry. So now I will go over the stencil with my embossing ink pad and I'm smooshing uh, the ink pad uh, really firmly to make sure that uh, everything is going to be covered with uh, embossing ink. I have also secured the stencil at the back of the page with some purple tape, I don't know if you can tell. So I know that everything is going to be nice and uh, neat. And you can see I'm lifting my project to catch the light just to make sure that the ink is all over the place. Now I'm going to apply some clear embossing powder this is going to stick only where the embossing ink is and I'm going to hit set it. This is going to turn my leaves into looking really shiny and uh, then I will repeat the same process for the rest of the page again one more time with a stencil. Now my background is ready and I am going to do some resist inking which means that I'm using my blending tool. I will apply all over the place Distress Oxide ink. This is going to cover up completely the area where it's not embossed, but where the leaves are that are embossed with my clear embossing powder, they are not going to be covered. So I'm using here Ground Expresso and I will also add Black Soot. And then I will use a towel and I will remove all the excess ink from the leaves. I love this technique. I think this background uh, turned out really gorgeous and um, I am actually going to add even more Distress Oxide ink of uh, black soot at the center just to help all those leaves to pop even more. And again this is a great background to create a card if you want to make one for fall, for Thanksgiving. Really gorgeous. Now I'm going to draw three pumpkins in different sizes 
I'm working with a pencil very lightly on top of uh, mixed media cardstock and I'm just drawing the basic shapes of my pumpkins. You can see I want two uh, normal ones and one of those tall uh, pumpkins. And now that I have the basic shape, I can go ahead and add the vertical lines. Pumpkins are really easy to draw. Remember, they don't have to be perfect. Now I looked through my stash to find uh, stamps that I had with uh, pumpkins, but I couldn't find the size that I wanted and all those different shapes. So I decided to draw them myself. If you don't feel confident about your um, drawing skills and you want to have some pumpkins for a similar project, then you can go online and just print out some uh, designs, cut them out and use them on your projects. Now I will use a fine tip permanent marker to go over the pencil lines and draw that, uh, those pumpkins one more time. I'm not trying to have the best of the lines here. This is not a stamp and it's not a printed one. I want to have my lines quite sketchy as you can see. And once I go all over those pencil lines for all three of the pumpkins, I can use my eraser and just erase all those pencil lines that I can still see. Don't feel stressed about your drawing skills. You can see my pumpkins don't look perfect at all, but after adding the color and the shading and the highlighting, they are going to look gorgeous. So I'm using my scissors to cut them all out, and then I will go ahead and do the coloring. Now, of course, there are so many different ways to color. I decided to go with my Distress Oxide inks, and I'm using three different colors here to add just a basic layer. So I'm using fossilized amber, carved pumpkin, and I'm also adding just a little bit of uh, vintage photo at the bottom. And I colored my two pumpkins the same way. For the tall pumpkin, I wanted to look as if it was one of those white pumpkins that, uh, that are in the market. So I covered it up with anti-cleaner and then added some vintage photo for the shading. And remember, this is just the first layer of color for my pumpkins. Now I'm going to use a completely dry brush and I will dip it in multi-medium matte and I'm going to completely cover up the pumpkins. The matte medium is going to seal down the Distress Oxide ink, so no matter what I do on top of these pumpkins, it's not going to move or smudge. I'm very gentle with the brush as I'm applying the matte medium, however I do move a little bit of uh, the Distress Oxide ink that is underneath, as you can see on my scrap piece of paper that I'm working on. However, when the matte medium dries over the pumpkin, it's going to seal everything. And I'm going to do some shading now that the matte medium is dry, for that I'm going to show you how you can do it with your Distress Markers and your crayons, two different techniques with similar results, so you can choose your favorite. I usually do the shading with my big brush markers, but I wanted to show you that this is not the only way. This is vintage photo, I am applying a very thin line of uh, brown, just where those uh, lines are, and I'm just smoothing it out with my finger. It is very easy to do this, because this is non-porous, I have uh, applied matte medium, remember? which makes this surface quite uh, slippery and it's really easy to blend out this uh, crayon. I will also add a little bit at the base of uh, my pumpkin. I can also add some brighter color for just for some variation there. And this is uh, spiced marmalade, so I'm just going to add uh, a few strokes there, blend them out with my finger again. And you can really tell the difference now between the two pumpkins can see how the other one looks so flat without any shading. Now for the other pumpkin, just for the fun of it, I'm going to show you how you can do the shading with the distress markers. So again I'm using the same colors, vintage photo here, to draw the lines, blend them out with my finger, and you can see I'm using the exact same techniques, I'm just using a different medium. And just like I did for the first pumpkin, I'm going to brighten it up a little bit with uh, the orange marker, which is spiced marmalade. And my pumpkin is ready. 
And remember, I'm working on a non-porous surface, which means that if I decide that I don't like some of the shading that I did, I can always use a wet baby wipe and go over the pumpkin and you can see that I can remove everything and start over. And now that I have uh, added the shading on all the pumpkins, I'm also going to add some highlights. As you can see, I'm using my picket fence, Distress Crayon. You can also blend it with your finger. And I think these uh, pumpkins look really gorgeous. And my lovely pumpkins are ready. Before I stick them down, I want to give them some ground so that they don't uh, float around on my page. For that, I will use this uh, corrugated cardstock. Now, this is actually one from the surfaces by Tim Holtz and it is um, self-adhesive. So if I go at the back, I can remove this. But I don't want to stick it completely flat on my page, so I decided to add some foam tape at the back to add some dimension. Remember that this is a page for a disc bound journal, which gives me enough freedom to add the dimensional elements, which is not something I would do if I was working on a book. Now, once I decided where I want my pumpkins to go, I will stick them down. So for some of the pumpkins, I'm using white glue at the back and they are going to lay flat on my background. And for the pumpkin that is at the front, I'm going to add glue at the bottom. And at the top, I'm going to add some uh, foam tape. So this way, I'm going to level it up with the corrugated cardstock. And I end up having this uh, pumpkin dimensional. I'm also going to use some of the stickers from the Occasions uh, booklet by Tim Holtz. So I will use one that says Carving Time, another one that says Pumpkin Picking, and there is one more that is saying uh, a falling leaf is Autumn Splendor. And now for some finishing touches, I'm going to add some uh, white lines all around these stickers, just to highlight them a little bit and help them uh, pop against the background. For that, I'm using my fine tip uh, Posca pen. I'm also going to use a dry brush and add just a little bit of gesso over the corrugated cardstock. This is going to highlight it and it's a technique that is called dry brushing. And I can go with finishing touches forever. So here I'm going to add some splashes just because I feel that I don't have enough. So I am going to cover up uh, the sentiments with uh, a few scrap pieces there. And then I will add my splashes. This is white gesso that I have diluted with water. I am protecting the pumpkins here, but I will decide at the end that I want to have just a few splashes here and there. Now this is where I decided that I want to add one more of those stickers that says the color of autumn. I told you I can go on with details and finishing touches forever. And uh, I am going to call this page done. I will put it on my disc bound journal. And these are all the three pages that I shared this week. This is actually a page that I made for Simon Says Tab as I was a guest designer there. Make sure to visit their uh, YouTube channel to check the video if you haven't done so already. And here is the finished project for today. I hope you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget that you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Thank you all so much for watching and have a lovely weekend.